please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording, which we use to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. Excuse me. All comments made in open session will be recorded. So first up on our agenda tonight, we have a discussion about the recently cleared property at 204 Center Street and the current status of the property. Are you here to tell us a little bit more about where we are? I am. You want to just, um, you don't live in town, do you? I don't, but I Okay, yeah. if you just, for the record. Uh, my name is Matt Dacey from Champion Builders, one of the owners at Pembroke Village, along with Kevin Seeland, who uh, couldn't make it tonight. Um, so we were asked to come before the board this evening to kind of give an update as to where we stand. So we went ahead and... Sit down. Uh, cleared the lots. We have a foundation permit in hand. Um, we have had uh, preliminary discussions. I think we uh, last time we were in front of the board here informally to uh, potentially uh, request uh, variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals, which we're in preparation to file with them for uh, housing units on the second floor, similar to what they did next door, okay. um, and to reduce some of the um, office commercial space. And so we're in process of trying to get that application put together. Uh, it won't change the footprint of the building. It won't change the ele front elevation of the building per se. Um, and that's that's the avenue that we're trying to explore right now at this point in time. And so I think that we need to speak with the zoning board and then come back to you guys for affirmation and okay on the overall because you guys handle the district too, I, as I understand it. I think that was the way. Can they do that though with a site plan that's already approved? And we didn't go through the site plan approval process again. Right. We're wor working off of an old site plan. Can they go get a variance off an existing site plan that's been approved already? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. What, um, what is your schedule as far as actually starting construction? Well, as soon as we. As soon as we get the word that you know which way we can go, yeah. it's not going to really change the installation of the of the you know digging the solid hole, putting the foundation, right. and that type of thing. But we want to kind of get a get a feel. Like we tried to speak with the zoning board basically informally to see if that was something that would be worthy of a filing, and they were like, uh, we were advised you know file and then we'll have a hearing. So we're in the process of putting that together. What um, about cleaning up the right side of the, of the site. The it's left side is, is pretty much the subgrade, but the right side isn't, is it? Yeah, it still needs to be stomped and cleaned yeah. up. And, right. Yeah, yeah. Is so what's the timeline for that? We don't specifically have one, but um, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're kind of hoping to you know, kind of have it all together so we go in there and kind of get it all squared away. Was there yeah, yeah that was definitely a concern that we've expressed. Yeah, that's yeah. Lot, we've been yeah. hearing a lot from people. Who okay. Are, yeah. It's not, it's not yeah, we, many I mean, obviously, we'd like to do the whole thing yeah, you know, but in one shot. If you've done, you've done the left side, you might as well have Kevin go in and clean up the right side so that at least it looks, it looks more presentable than it does right now. He's a tough guy to get a hold of. Well, okay. <laughs> well <laughs> it, should, it should be easier for you than for us. <laughs> I, I think the hard thing is that it was sort of like a hurry up and wait thing, you know. And so we had advice of council about the site plan and and you know yep. the, the change in zoning, what have you. But um, it wasn't it. It's always been a little murky, right? And we kind of said, all right, let's just get it done. And you guys were pretty quick to go in and clear it. But then it just sort of stalled at a process that, for the homeowners who right. are behind there, it's not a very pretty sight yep. to look out at. Yep. And so our hope was that it wouldn't sort of hurry up and wait. We're already, you know, seven months past that point. And I hear you. So, it's so part of, of mess. part of our, uh, our delay was, you know, um, you know, we we had discussions with with John from out back as far as. Uh, maybe doing the residential unit, so that kind of triggered a different thought process, and then we kind of had those plans drawn up to see if that would actually, you know, work. Uh, and we think that it probably would, and we, I think we came in and informally spoke with you guys, 
Right. Uh, you know, a few months ago, that now I think was probably back in March or something. Yeah, and this board had some concern about yeah. taking an existing site plan and putting residential in the part that was supposed to be commercial because there was already more residential than there was supposed to be on that site. Um, you certainly are free to seek a variance from the ZBA, but honestly, I don't know what the impact then is on whether we have to do a new site plan review. I think we do. Like, does that reopen site plan review? Well, it certainly is a marked change from what was originally proposed. It's a significant change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so a, cu a couple of the things, we, so we discussed it with our attorney, Bob Galvin, yeah. and he thought that, you know, the site in and of itself, as far as the exterior of the building, parking and all that type of thing, isn't going to change. Why would and the parking change? Because well, we have suffice parking now okay. for what we would propose to do. So all of that would be uh, pretty much set in place. It's already set in place. Mm -hmm. And so just the, having the, you know, uh, you know his, his thing was the, the site plan is the site plan. And that, if that doesn't change, it really shouldn't be an issue of the use of the building. Um, but well, maybe that, well, we, we, that, that is an it's kind of like maybe. two bites at the apple. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I mean, I think it's one of those things where site plan review, <coughs> generally if there's a major change of use, even in an existing structure, mm -hmm. right? If you had a, an existing um, structure that was going to have a, a significant change in use, there would be a new site plan review, even if it was already built. Right. Um, so the question becomes, whether or not it needs a new site plan review, and I don't know the answer to that. And, and, and I don't think that wasn't going to be, certainly, you know, I think our, pro our, our progression through the process would have to be uh, zoning board, if successful, back then to the back planning here. board, because I think that, that was the direction that yeah, you guys had given if us. If that's the case, you may have to have a new site plan if zoning goes along with you. If zoning doesn't go along Which means with it you. opens up the public hearing process again. Right. Which which we're not particularly opposed to. I mean, yeah. that's what we're trying to do. We're, you know, yeah. We don't really have anything to hide. I mean, we've been pretty much think, open all the I way. think that not having that site cleaned up is not going to help you in the public hearing process. Just to Kevin about at least, yeah. at least yeah. cleaning I mean, up. You know, so, so there's a couple there's a couple things going you know going on. So we can, I'll, I'll go over it with them and we'll, we'll see if we can get that straightened out. And certainly we want to, you know, we want to hit all the bases. So we know that we have to go to zoning. Once, you know, if we're successful there, um, then we'll come back to you guys for, you know, whichever, whatever it might be. I right. think there's some kind of, at least a blessing, um, and, and, and maybe a full site plan review, which is, you know, that's really, I don't think it's going to change all that dramatically, because one of the things that was, that we, you know, that we've checked out, and, and I'm 90% sure we're, we're all set with it as far as the, the septic being able to handle that. So, oh yeah, you're adding bedrooms. Well, there was a well, there was a question on that. There was like yeah. two or three questions. That well, that, that's why use is so important. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the use of me residential, you're going to have an impact on the septic, and you know, uh, Peter, what, what do you think about that as far as the existing site plan and well, the septic may be an issue just because commercial, <clears throat> whether it be office or retail, is significantly less than 110 gallons per day per bedroom. Right. So that I don't know the type of units they're talking about right there. I'm just saying it may have an impact for health with that particular impact. Right. So that's why it would trigger the site plan approval. Yeah. And that's why the use significantly changes the site plan. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as we've discussed, we really haven't had a tremendous. We've had a few inquiries uh, relative to uh, the retail use and commercial use, but um, you know that hasn't been. You know, our door has been barreled in but we, we have had some discussions with a few different people which you know could could bear some fruit uh, and we're still exploring that but in at the same time putting together the package but it did take us a little bit to figure out like who do we ask for that permit <laughs> is it you guys because now you guys have control over the well you already have a site plan it's all approved ready to go yeah we're I good mean, to go we can put well, the foundations I mean, in we I mean, already well, have you, know, you were good to go for the use that was approved I mean you're good to go for the retail use of the office use as I said here we're good, we're good to go Right. Yeah. And I have a foundation permit in hand. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But at some point, if this drags on forever, then it behooves us to figure out how we get that site cleaned up. Right. right? Yeah. Because we 
we have a lot of opposition, right, to allowing that site plan to continue. The, the condo, um, your neighbors in the condos and across the street were not happy that the board... After like 12 years. You know, sudden. after all these, well, less yeah. than that, right? I think, well, I think Kevin had a meeting with, with the people with the condos that we yeah. built. He well, had they a meeting were, with them they, last month and uh, went over everything with them. And, oh, he you know, did? Yeah, okay. yeah. Good. I, I, was, I was out of town, so, but uh, he met with them. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe seven or eight or ten of the, I don't know exactly the number of of, um, of unit owners, but met with them, told them what our plans were, told them the people that we were talking to. They were they were actually half encouraged to, uh, you know, have other residential units there versus commercial office type of thing. But um, again, I mean, once we once we bring it to the forefront and file with the zoning board, I think that we'll, we'll have more clarity as to who's on first and what's on second. Yeah, keep in mind that um, that you know the approval of the thank you the approval of the um, the approval of the site plan to have commercial use there was not accidental, right? The the intention of the bylaw was to promote the development of some commercial space in the center protection district and in fact we have almost no space available in that center protection district right now I mean no there's very little commercial space for rent in that area um, and that was our goal all along I probably of the board here from the quick read I was one of the people who was more in favor of maybe letting the upstairs be residential but the the board overall wasn't very inclined towards that because there was already so much more residential than commercial on that piece of property. Right. But I have to say that as I drive by it every day and see that the the that it looks so bad, it, it's not it's not making me feel like this is going to be a good project for the town. I really think it needs to get cleaned up. Is my message? Well, I think that's a little, a little much. I mean, no, you know, both, it's both, not. both Kevin Seeland and myself have been builders in this town for more than twenty-five years, and we built a lot of homes. But, and, but once, and, and once Kevin started, he should have finished at least the preparation. We mm -hmm. he got half of it done, and he stopped. And we understand that he probably got busy some other place. Well, there's, there's not only that, but we're also <coughs> tr we're trying to we're trying to. You know, we were we, we didn't really know where to go. You know, right, this, this a pile of stumps on there it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. It's it's just a pile of stumps. Right. Sitting yeah, there. yeah. I mean, the pile of stumps <laughs> is never going to be useful for any project, right? Right. I mean, I was I was the guy that wasn't <laughs> able to cut down the tree, so I mean, I, I get it. But yeah, so I mean, and, and you know, the, to to fill the commercial space is not an easy task in right. today's marketplace. It's, know as crazy as that sounds when are you meeting with VBA I do not know yet exactly but I know that uh, Sealand's office is, is preparing that package to be filed and it, I, I'm pretty sure it should be done this week so once you go you got to go to them first right correct See, I, yeah. I felt like you guys were all in a hurry to build those buildings when well, you guys came in in December yeah, but, yeah. but but they had a they had a, you know a a timeline, a <laughs> deadline. They had a real hard deadline. So, right. You know, of course they had were moving fast. <laughs> so right. That deadline. So. Right. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a there's a couple things going on. I mean, we, you know, at, at one at one point, you know, we the question became came, was our our initial permit still valid? Right. That's right. that's what we came back like last last summer, I think, and we went through that whole process and. Um, yeah. So we kind of we said okay, we think it's still valid, but we'll still go through the process to get the permits and you know come back to the planning board and you know bring Galvin in and have Grady do all the plans and, 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 and kind of get all tuned back up again to make sure that we're still good to go, and which we did do, and now we're at the point where and, you and know, we had to actually truthfully we're kind of happy about that because we we wanted to see the project as it yep. was originally intended go forward. Right. Yeah. So we were happy to see you guys. Do, doing what you were doing, and we had then changed the bylaw, knowing that, we, and we extended out the time for the application to be in right after the bylaw was passed, so that you guys would have some time. Yeah. Understanding that your project was was there, ready to go, um, or could be ready to go. 
Right. So we, we even kind of extended out a deadline. Yeah. With you guys in mind, specifically. But, so. but I think I think ultimately, I think I'm here tonight in front of you guys to answer the question of, okay, yeah, you went this far. Can you clean the thing up and then go through your filing and, yeah, and I, then I, hope, you know, I, hope for the best. So we get where you're going with the residential piece of it and going to the ZBA and... And there is a we want we want to make having sense. the site plan be reopened, which we may have to have happen. I think you have to have it reopened at that point. You have in time. To like, don't you have to almost like redo it? I mean, you're asking this is like something completely different. Well, um, major modification. No. Right? It's a major modification okay. of a site plan. The first, the first step is ZBA. Right. Once ZBA gives you approval or disapproval, that's going to determine your your decision. What ZBA you're can always allow you to. I mean, ZBA can always give you permission to um, not a major, major no. modification they can give you a, a relief on use restriction right so if there's a use restriction in the site plan they can give relief on the use restriction however, but it still has to come back here uh, however we are the special permitting authority in the center protection district so they can't give a special permit they could give right. a variance only it would right. be a very it would be a very i think i think we talked about this last time i think it would be a variance request from the zoning board, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm just taking a shot at what I heard here. But we go to the zoning as a variance request, because the planning board can't grant a variance to a, a zoning situation. No, right? we can't. So we go to them, and if we get that granted, then we come back to you guys to get your approval. So we basically have to get two approvals going that route. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of, I think it, it can get pretty confusing because it's it, this is a grandfather. Site plan, site plan. Yeah. which means that we may have to go back to our council again and get I, some advice. I think we do because. I, and the other well, question it is now how becomes long? it now becomes the op it now becomes the opposite, right? And how long does this play out? Okay. How long does it but play out? Nothing's going to happen until ZBA says yeah and nay. Well, correct? No. Not. Well, no. I mean, they could build what they have right now. If they right. trigger site plan, they're triggering site plan under the current zoning bylaws, not under the grandfathered bylaws with which they initiated the project. If they, it was the current bylaws, yeah. they wouldn't be allowed to build it, would they? Uh, they wouldn't be allowed to have the commercial piece. Or the condos. You know, they'd be allowed to have the condos. No, because it would be multi-use. Multi-family. Um, multi multi they don't have multi-family in right. the Right, so that complicates it even more. But they can get ZBA variants on use restrictions. That's they, what ZBA, right. ZBA can give them the right to have multifamily or to have commercial but they can't give a special <coughs> permit or site plan so how those two intersect we would need opinion of council on that. and to get a variance on a site plan that should have been issued seems unusual I mean, that's exactly an unusual situation so I don't know. yeah well yeah it is usually you get the variance before you get the site plan approved and then you've got a grandfather site plan to the grandfather set of bylaws, and now you got new bylaws in effect. It really complicates the issue. Yeah. We're just trying to do what's right. <laughs> and so no. I, I, I totally understand that. But I am still frustrated, I will say, <coughs> that we we cooperated at a point when things were kind of under the gun, and that cooperation allowed everything to get clear cut and the site to be partially cleared and now we're sitting there with an eyesore in the center of our town and that's not a very good feeling that we've in any way participated in that so I, you know that's that doesn't i hear the that doesn't feel board, right. and i think i think you can express express to kevin that's the sentiment of this board i get it okay. and i think he gets it and i okay. think that we can take the proper steps necessary to try to get that looking like something better than it is and get it shaped up and get ourselves in front of the zoning board and get back and see you guys and hopefully we can get to a point where we can get what we everybody's comfortable with and we can proceed with the construction of the, of the two buildings and clean it up and make it not something that's an eyesore for the town but something that's, that's, that's a plus. Good. That's yeah. a plus plus. Yeah. And, and really, I, I get it. And, and so, uh, to that end, we will uh, strive within the next 30 to 45 days to get everything squared away, may, you know, maybe within the next couple of weeks. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you All for right. Have a good night. Um, the next thing we have is 
a discussion about the visual screening on the Habermas Solar Project on Habermas Street. Um, right. I, I went by several times. Yeah. And they have constructed a new six foot or six or seven or eight foot high picket fence, um, stockade fence, mm -hmm. which visually blocks the majority of, of that from the street view. Mm -hmm. I think, it, well, it, it blocks a lot of it. Okay. I, I don't think planting, any plantings are going to do any good where the, where the stockade fence is. There aren't any residences there. Oh. There are residences further up. Yeah. But that but they are far enough back, I would think that maybe to extend the stockade fence. Yeah. Or the it's immaculate. immaculate. What? Yeah, oh the great. stockade yeah. fence oh, looks great. great. It, 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 it does. looks good. Right. Because the bushes that are there look nice. The the thing that, that I'd like to see is there are trees that are not not hedges, they're bit full grown trees. Run that uh, stockade fence another three or four hundred feet. That will, and even at that point, it's not going to make any difference to those homes up on the hill okay. because they already have a have a visual blockage from their own trees. Well, only one. Well, I think it was. But I mean, I think that the homeowner that has that has sort of complained to come forth is a homeowner kind of up on the hill, I believe. I guess the other thing I want to say is I think Peter has brought anyway, sort of his Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, but sort of some visual ideas or a proposal for what he is going to suggest as a possibility at least. Uh, well, so, and one of my concerns is that a lot of what we're seeing now in the way of greenery, there's like a gap between the stockade fence and where the greenery kind of starts. And then when the greenery is that's there, that's mostly summertime greenery. Right. It's not there in the winter. It's pretty bad. It's, um, that's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. Not between the trees. Nice and neat. I just, uh, Matthew had asked me that, that the board yeah. was concerned and was actually had come up with a plant number, uh, planting plan. Oh, okay. Not a plan per se, but a cost yeah. for planting. We so talked about that, yep. We went out there. Um, this is a aerial view of the property, and this is this was the plan that was submitted by the, um, yeah. uh, for the solar development. But I think this house here sits mm -hmm. up on a hill was one of the ones Matthew was talking about. Yeah. The existing stockade fence runs like this. There's a jog in it. You can see it's located here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it stops right about here. And then there's a little gap the, right here. Yep, yeah, exactly. The driveway comes down here. And I don't know what the abutter, what he's saying, whether it's when I come down my driveway or whatever. It's partially when he comes down the driveway. But there is a, that, yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. There's a gap right about in here that yes, you're, you're looking you down. As you come up here, there is some growth, and then it actually comes up in elevation at this point. Right. Actually, I think it's about here. Yeah, so you're looking at a, somewhat of a mound. Yeah. So I don't think that's the area, but a, a, a stockade fence might be a good good way to do it because, um, I mean, obviously it's up to the board, but the reason I came in, I wasn't quite sure exactly what the board had in mind, and if you wanted to go with plantings, if you wanted to, if it was going out to bid, how sophisticated yeah, the plan it had to be, and well, what we, so on and so forth. What we had originally talked about was between here, we, we were hoping they would fix the stockade fence. I think they surpassed our hopes. Yeah, that was great. Because we only yeah. thought they were going to do a little piece of it. So they really, they did that nicely. But then we were thinking between here and here, basically, that there we would have more, um, like, rhododendrons or... Um, Fill in, or yes. yeah, because it's kind of Everybody patchy is. over through here too with the houses up here. Yeah. There's a big mound, and you can it see does come a up. dirt slope here. Yeah. Some point. Yeah. way up high. Yeah. Think about it, this point here, which would be, yeah. I think, it over here. Mm -hmm. Maybe this. These this people point. are really the only Maybe ones. Maybe it's down here actually, because here's the driveway. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. this driveway. Yeah. 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 Kind of lose behind the trees, but it comes yeah. through somewhere around yeah. here. So, and here's the other driveway. So, yeah, it's probably right about here it starts. Originally, when we had thought that we would do that row of trees that you were right. that you were talking about, how far were we trying to cover? We, we had covered, I think, 800 million feet. 800 feet? Yeah, I don't, I don't what, what's your scale for you? Well, this is, that's 100 feet, so 800 would be way over. We couldn't oh, be, be up to here. 800 covered the whole front, yeah. even where there's fence. Oh, okay. I didn't think we were ever trying to cover the fence, were we? No, 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 no. Well, the we, we were doing 800 linear feet, I thought. I, I had plants every 10 feet. So I had 800 feet. 80, 80 plants, basically. 
Well, we could we could finish the stockade fence, couldn't we? Well, that's that's the other option. That's what I'm saying. How much would that cost? A lot yeah. less than what we've got well, to spend. Well, put it this way: <laughs> the stockade fence is probably worth drops yeah. forty bucks a foot. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. You know, yeah. so oh, you're hundred you're hundred feet at most. Right? So what? I would say hundred feet would do it. Maybe even maybe two hundred at most. Two hundred feet is an eight grand. And then yeah, maybe a few plants in front of the stockade just to make it look green? It was um, disappearing into the woods more or less. Armstrong fence put in the fence because they were actually putting it up when I was out there. Yeah, So, I mean, I don't know who they plant. Must have been with the DPW? I would imagine it's maybe the which we call it, the direction. What's the maintenance on the stockade versus adding evergreens? For the town down the road. <laughs> Looking at the last one, I'd say none. Well, I know, but <laughs> which is going to survive better <laughs> 10 years like from now? <laughs> years or something like that. That's, that's, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, too, if you think about it, probably by the time in 15 years when that fence is like starting to go again, it'll probably be a lot more grown up in that area. You mean more vegetation? Yeah. yeah correct. And it'll be taken out the solar. Yeah. <laughs> a wind farm. <laughs> With a wind farm. <laughs> exactly. I still, I was still hoping that the street would still have some greenery. Well, you could put the greenery in too. With the like some roadies or some evergreens or something along there. Yeah. It's just hard. It's a big gravel slope and part of it that's been there for years. There's a whole strip of like unmaintained from the sand trucks, you know what I mean? Like edge of road type. It's hard to plant that. Because, yes. Yeah, what hard. survives there? Edge of road. Well, really, about where you're getting to, there's the natural. Yeah. Right? Isn't there like the peninsula? Yeah. Or there's like natural. Just need, need some time to fill in. We had talked about a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. We should probably do that. Yeah, and we've got a time. Certainly for yeah. public okay, well, so I'll hold on to this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, so I guess we'll be back to you, Peter. Sure, Are you here fine. for any of the other public meetings uh, tonight? Um, yeah, I'm on later today. So oh, okay. Later today. All right. Thank you. All right, we'll continue that discussion. Um, do we want to set a date for a uh, site walk, real quick? I could so do like a Sunday. Yeah. Saturdays are tough on me. Sundays are better. It's like early afternoon. Oh, morning. It's the Lord's time. You can't go early on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> yeah, where are you going to be? <laughs> Church. July 8th, maybe? July 8th, okay. I think that'll work. And what, 11? 11, sure. Is that too much in the middle of the day? Would no, we rather something earlier, morning, like 10? That's the puppy's That's nap time. July, <laughs> July 10 or 11? I mean, July 8th at 10 or 11. What's the uh, desire? 11. 11. Okay. All right, so we'll plan a site walk for July 8th at 11 a.m. to take a look again at the screening on the project. Okay, now it's time to reopen our public hearing for proposed definitive subdivision number 1801 titled Dominic's Way, located at 56 Gorham Avenue, consisting of three single-family houses. This public hearing has been continued from March 19, 2018, April 2, 2018, April 23, 2018, and June 4, 2018. But I will note that on June 4, we had no substantive discussion. We simply um, closed the meeting and continued it to tonight because of quorum issues. Thank you. Sorry about that. You can fit in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give the installation yeah. before I bring the board up to um, Thank you for the packet because it is hard to follow over time. Okay. Um, for the records are in the government from Sandbeck and Taylor representing the ventures on the LLC, the proponent of the project. Um, I'm going to be brief, as I know we have other hearings on this evening. Uh, in my packet, basically what I did, just for informational purposes, was to put 
kind of a quick update letter as to where we stand because it has been some time since we've met on this project, uh, the last hearing being April 2nd. And at that time, um, we received what we thought were some pretty clear instructions from the board to look at moving the drainage uh, back and over along with the roadway. We've been through, I believe, all of the other engineering issues with Peter. I included, just in case you didn't have it, I included a copy of his April 2nd review in which he notes we've addressed almost all of his concerns. There are a couple of uh, minor ones regarding drainage issues, one being uh, some additional test bits which we've done, as well as incorporating our drainage trench behind lot three in the easement, which again is part of our drainage reset, if you will. Uh, as well as a couple of construction related items. But if you look through his letter, you'll see the vast majority of them say common has been addressed. And I believe at that time we also addressed all of the waiver issues. Uh, the board didn't appear to have any issues with the requested waivers. Again, the one that was kind of hanging would have been relative to cross section of the roadway, um, assuming that we were going to shift the pavement and shift the drainage to try to gain as much separation from Gormat as possible. We've looked at a couple of things since then. Uh, we've gone out and done some test pits <clears throat> behind where the basins were originally proposed, as well as the basins Peter required on Lot 3. Also did another test pit up in the center of the cul-de-sac area. Um, and in developing an approach to this, um, what we looked at was shifting the road back as requested by the board, leaving it within the limits of the layout, <clears throat> and bearing in mind that the fire chief also wishes, wished for us to increase the pavement width to 21 feet, which we said we would do, and provide him with his uh, full pavement width that he needs, <clears throat> leaving the cul-de-sac at 24 foot width, as we mentioned the last time, so that he has sufficient turn radius. Um, with that, what we've been able to do is gain, <clears throat> basically push the road cross section 10 feet north and west, um, pushing the soil north and west, <clears throat> pushing the basins back so that we're <clears throat> still adjacent to the soil, still showing our paved runoffs. <clears throat> um, what that gains us is so that we have some additional separation as well as the property immediately to the east. Uh, it brings us from five feet to about 25 feet back to the very top of the basin. That gives a pretty good buffer. It's about what the distance is now. I actually taped this when I was doing the test. It's from the edge of the pavement <coughs> about through some of the larger trees. We're about where the edge of the test pits are now that we did before in this area kind of the disturbed area. Um, so that was one option we looked at. Um, we provide Cape Cod berm on both sides of the road, all the way through, provide Cape Cod berm throughout. Um, in order to gain a little bit of additional room, we do away with the stone filter trench that we didn't really use, was not part of our um, pretty much part of our suspended solids separation. We're using the water quality soil in the forebay for that. So we'll still achieve the same effect, um, but have pretty much a conforming roadway for the fire chief's wishes through the center with that basin pushed over and pushed back. One of the, limited, one of the limitations we encountered in doing the additional test pits up in the middle as we get up in here, we hit a rather large pocket, if you will, of silt. Um, starts at about three feet down and extends to between, I'll say between seven and nine feet down, um, which really, if you have a dense material like silt, it's not bad to have that under a four bay. Your four bays can be uh, a relatively impervious material. You don't want infiltration in your four bay. However, we're proposing a recharge basin, so salt is not really what we want to see in the location of a proposing recharge. And in front, really down to 17 feet, 
and I think about 12 feet in these two test bits. So the recharge itself does need to stay out front. Um, again, silt in here. As we get up into the watts, we're up at higher, much higher elevation by almost 10 feet. So we're above, probably well above that silt layer. Most of the test pits we did in this area were around 12 to 13 feet deep for the septic, um, probing for groundwater. So higher elevation, but more pervious material. And un unfortunately, the water doesn't flow the hill with the laws of physics being what they are. We looked at kind of a 1A option, uh, which is part of your packet. Mm -hmm. And that. That's the concept plan, too? Yeah. That is to take, and it's, it's been done, we've done it in other locations. Um, and again, bearing in mind that, that the road is intended to remain private, which we've kind of done for at length already, um, is to capture runoff from just the cul-de-sac, which is a, a fairly substantial part of the drainage, and a double catch basin uh, as it comes off the cul-de-sac, run it through a, catch, a standard catch basin with a hood, through a water quality oil grit separator, which would be about a 1,500 gallon, basically like a septic tank, and then send it back into the center of the catch, uh, the center of the cul-de-sac into a smaller recharge basin with a three to one cell. Uh, basin would be, again, about the same depth, about five feet. Um, you could plant around the outside of it, not in the middle of it, but you could certainly plant around the edges of it too. Um, provide some visual buffering. Um, from what I can see, and again, this is not a fully engineered option because we don't want to go through all of that back and forth <coughs> without really getting a sense from the board which way they'd like to see us go. You'd hold about a 25-year storm for this, which would take also the area of the front of the driveways and the houses. Above that, it would start to overflow probably through a paved runoff, simply make its way back into the swale and back into the rest of the drainage system. But that would allow you to reduce the size of both the four bay and the basin, anticipate maybe you'd get an additional 10 feet of separation to the street. You might be out to, I'm gonna say 32 to 35 feet off the street, roughly. Because you could probably, logic dictates if you're you're holding a portion of it up in here, you can make this smaller. You're gonna hold up to a 25 year storm in the center of the cul-de-sac. Um, a little bit more back and forth with the piping going in. Um, I'd have to obviously run through Peter the mechanics of that, because that would be a, a slight change. Whereas the way we have it laid out is kind of choice number one. Everything essentially stays the same. We still have runoffs, check dams, we still have our, our water quality swale. Everything just physically moves over. Um, but the engineering behind it stays the same. Both options would require very slight changes to the road profile. Um, the second one probably a little bit more extensive because we'd probably want to flatten the cul-de-sac a little bit. Again, another reason we haven't fully engineered it because we could walk in and you could just say, nah, thumbs down, we don't want to do that. Um, but again, nothing drastic. You know, basically, you're taking the roadway and shifting it over in both cases. You'd have, um, for the layout that you have, you'd basically be holding the left side of the pavement um, five feet off the property line to the street with the street right of way line. And at its closest point up here, your pavement would still be within the layout. But at its closest point, just about where the lot corner is, uh, you'd be two to three feet off the edge of the property line. But you're not we're not proposing a sidewalk. It's one of the waivers that we've requested. Grading can certainly be blossomed out a little bit so that it, you have a little bit of room around it. Your hydrant, any transformers, any utilities are over in the area in front of the houses. 
So over in here, basically this kind of northwest corner or northwest edge of the cul-de-sac is kind of dead space. You have <clears throat> lot one here, which is existing with a shed, and then a portion of lot two, which is up in here, which is really up on top of the mill over on that side. So you can just flank the grading out very slightly. And um, from physical appearances, it would look. Just a quick question. I'm just trying sure. to refresh my memory on this. Yep. That pie-shaped piece down at the bottom, here. that's actually your land with, with the abutter stuff on it? Correct. Okay. The property line is here. Okay. Um, we've shown a couple of times an easement line along pretty much outside and beyond this stone driveway, um, which again, moving the road over okay. allows us to push this farther away. Um, it is desirable to have Is that done in line of fence or is that? Here? Yeah. Yeah, we have proposed a fence along okay. the side, um, down that side line. And again, we'd, we'd look at something like that being pretty similar in both instances. Um, we might gain a little bit of additional separation if we we're able to make the basin a little bit smaller, um, probably by a few feet, not a tremendous amount. You're not going to get 50 feet. You might gain six to eight feet in the width by right. pushing it if you, But if you, you, put you need to keep that land for frontage, right? Yeah. 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 We had, yeah, we had had the discussion before where the frontage, um, we meet the frontage requirements because the lots will take frontage on the new road. Right, right, right. So. But the roadway itself has the, de the required mm. radius right of way and then radius on this side. Including that place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have a question because I am still kind of slow when I look at plans. When I look at the um, plan B, mm -hmm. And I can visually see that the basins are significantly smaller by by having a recharged basin up in the cul-de-sac, right. which I think it's you know is I, I can see that you are really trying to address some of the abutters' concerns with that. Um, how how deep is that infiltration basin in in, in B? both instances? They're going to be about five feet deep. That's not going to change. Okay, uh, it's pretty much. If the grading around it, well, for instance, this elevation, this contour run it pretty much to the lower one third of the road is 94. Uh, down front, you have a low area right here that we had noted. That actually, I have the elevations of the test pits right here, 93 and about 92.3. The bottom of this basin would be around 87. I mean, you have a couple of recharge structures in it. Four bay would be very slightly higher and spill over into the basin. Um, again, in altering the road profile a little bit, which is one of the reasons I haven't shown the sag point, is we'd probably bring the low spot back a little bit further. Right now it's about 70 feet in. Might get to 90 to 100 feet in. We'd have to bring it back just a little bit further. And then steepen this middle section a little bit. Uh, if I remember right, we went a negative one to a plus four to a two. So by going back a little, maybe this becomes a plus five. <coughs> this maybe becomes a one and a half. Again, and fully engineering details we haven't worked out because one or the other makes a big difference in what we do. One quick uh, question, yep. Terry. Uh, looking at both plans, mm -hmm. uh, the pitch is coming out 94 at the upper retention pond. What is the elevation of the roadway at the paved runway between the at the first pond at the first retention infiltration? You know, Down here was initially our sag point. Um, yeah, which was going to be what? This was just around 92. Okay, so all the just, water off of Gorham is coming back. It's pitching into us. Pitching yeah. back to you. We're okay. not pitching anything okay. on to. Because you, you, yeah, did, you, you don't show the, the 92 contour here, which you probably yeah. should. Yeah, we're not pitching. Well, again, this is just drawn no, conceptually. I understand. So I understand. We can kind of 
show you what the, the data sums are without all of the clock. But all of the, in our original design, all call, call for a negative pitch of 1% back okay. into our road. Right. Nothing pitching out onto the lot. It's all going to be pitched back on the lot. Can I ask you another question? Was I following you when you were talking about the recharge basin in the cul-de-sac? Mm -hmm. It sounded to me like in a lot of storms, the bulk of the water would end up in the cul-de-sac basin. In a regular rainstorm, how full would the infiltration be? Would it still fill up in a regular rainstorm? It would get probably about two feet deep for a short period of time. Again, one of the requirements is that that basin has to be dry within a 72 hour period. I um, haven't run through the calculations, but we did the test it up in here, went down 14 feet to show that it's all beautiful sand and gravel in this area. So, you know, we can pretty much assume if we put a recharge structure in there, just a basic leaching pit with stone around it, water is going to get in, it's going to have the opportunity to, to recharge, and it should empty out within 72 hours. Um, and will it, will it, so the infiltration basin down by the street will be smaller, but still will be designed to recharge, empty out within 72 correct. hours. Yep, okay. and that's one of the, part of the process that we went through the Peter revision. Okay. And do you think this one's going to be five feet deep as well? Yeah. Peter, did you have a thought? We haven't looked at it no. Okay. As you're looking at it, is there any questions that you think we should be asking? Um, no, okay. I can't really think of any. I mean, I, I think you know if, if the engineering works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, and if it meets the DEP stormwater standards, it does. If it doesn't, it could be tweaked a little bit. I, I don't see any any major issues, but I, again, I haven't looked at it, so um, I really don't have much to say as far as the design. The, the simplest one of moving everything over is pretty much the design that Peter's reviewed, just with everything pushed over and pushed back. This being the slight tweaking of it, um, I think the only question Peter might have is do we get enough of the suspended solids out before we go into the, the actual basin itself with catch basin hood, put something mm -hmm. like an eliminator trap on it through the water quality inlet and then into the basin, but that's something Peter would have to look at. That's that's the part of it I would have to vet out for. I mean, my my initial reaction is it does seem like Plan B addresses some of the concerns that the abutters had about how close to the roadway the basin would be and how large the basin would be. So it does seem to to um, give a fair amount of relief to the abutters' concerns. Um, does anybody have a different reaction to it? No, I was just, just concerned. The, the slopes at the cul-de-sac look like they're three or four to one, Terry? Three to one. Three to one around and three to one, one on, on, the, on the inside. Yep. And what about the slopes for the floor bay and the infiltration All bay? three to one. All three to one. Yep. Okay. Um, is, that, is that something bad or good? No, that's okay. okay. It, it, it was two to one. It was two to one. It's a little steep, but three okay. to one's okay. Gotcha. Three to one's better. <coughs> four to one's better. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, right, the ladder gets across the big. Right, yeah, the, I so, mean, there's right. not enough room. Yeah. That's the only problem. I, I just want to just chime give in your for, name. Uh, Mike Rashali, I'm the petitioner. I um, just want to chime in real quickly. So I think, I know it's been some period of time, several months since we were here, but we kind of went over all of the hurdles, I believe, in the previous meetings, and the real directive was get some relief for the abutters in regards to the uh, drainage basins, which. Um, Terry has shown us the two options that we can physically make work. And um, ultimately, at the end of the day, I know you can't sign off on it, but we're kind of looking for you as the board to say, conceptually, this works. And then we can go spend the money on the engineering to get that picture to work. And that's kind of what we're looking for at the end of the day. No, I, I know I'd love to see a, a profile, uh, which you haven't done yet, because you're not at that point. It's not going to be radically different. I can tell you that. I can tell you it wouldn't be radically different. You're not going from 
I'm not changing that rate. middle slope Just from say a four to yeah. a ten percent. Um, since we're still in a public hearing, if anybody from the public wants to respond, just give your name and address so that we have it for the minutes. Brett says, no, it's 59 Gorham Avenue through the board. Um, so, I mean, certainly the plan B, I think everybody would agree that is without a doubt better than, than plan A. Um, if they can go any further back, that'd be super, you know. Um, the, the, so a couple of concerns are the trees so I, I suspect that they all coming down which I think we, we'd like to see I mean don't want to see but I don't think you can eliminate 75% and leave 25% because they're gonna end up on my house and on Bruce's house you uh, mean if we have a storm yeah so what what's what's happening with all the trees out there? Well, the trees are standing there now yeah there's a storm tomorrow and they fell down they would fall down yeah, the trees were cut and thinned out, and there was a storm. Whatever was going to fall down would fall down. We can't really control that. Right. So, I mean, are you going to cut them all down? I, I think we would prefer to see them all go. You know, because There's I a think lot of when you pine in this, I don't. You know, we're going no, to cut. No, no, no doubt. But so, what's going to happen? I mean, if you talk to a, a tree guy, you, you come in and you take out 50% of those trees. Now you've just exposed them, particularly with the northeast wind. You don't usually get people who want trees cut down. Yeah, usually <laughs> we want people who want those trees exactly. to stay. Cause well, no, mind. trust me, I want them to stay, okay? But when you take down a whole chunk of them, you're now exposing all of these trees that were in the middle of the woods to winds that they've never been exposed before. And you know what happens when, when, when that happens? They all come down. But you, you understand you know I mean? if, if they take down that extra 35 feet of trees, then you're going to be looking at an infiltration basin as opposed to looking I'd, at wood. I'd rather have that than trees on my house. And I, and I, and I would hope that, you know, you're going to, well, you know, well, first, camouflage first, the, the pit in some way, shape, or form. This, you, you know? looked at the site extensively. Um, how many of the trees are close enough to an abutting home to maybe 20 third 20 of them well, the, I wanna, the, I wanna, you know what the from my foundation to the base of those trees is 60 feet you know how tall those trees are no 80 <clears throat> 90 feet tall okay is there a likelihood that there's you are how much of the how many of the trees will be left and how many would be have a likelihood of or okay. could um, possibly fall well what you any of them could yeah, fall. I, could I saw fall. a massive yeah. blow down in Marshfield this past winter on, on another yeah. project mm -hmm. we were working on. You just can't on. predict, yeah. You can't predict that. that. Yeah. Up behind I can Merch predict products. that when you wipe out a bunch of trees, you're, I mean, it's pretty simple, you know? I mean, now you've exposed trees that have never been exposed before. But by the time you dig these basins and set those structures, they're going to have to open up enough area to have their machines in there right. operating. No doubt. I'll, I'll, I'll give you kind of the standard construction wise. Um, number one, however exactly size these basins become, you want 10 foot access around them in order to be able to get in and clean them. Uh, narrower, I mean, this could be done with a small machine like a mini excavator or a bob cap. Mm -hmm. Maybe you get by with eight feet, but typically you clear 10 feet beyond. Um, I will cite back to a couple of notes that came up, one in Peter's report, one from the board, about site distance, particularly in this direction, coming in this direction. And you have several very large pines, one of the biggest of which we show, but you have a couple of them in this area that once removed would obviously improve that site distance. Uh, in for here, nothing we can do once we get down farther, but that was another consideration in this, is if this area is going to be cleared out, that you replant with some smaller trees that wouldn't grow to 100 foot tall, maybe a few rhododendrons or something that would provide buffering in that area. So you'd have an area in here, you know, you're probably looking, granted the existing driveway is, is a little part of this in the beginning, but you're probably 75 feet width of clearing, 80 foot width of clearing back to about to where you get to the lot lines. So there's um, nothing left. We did note, it's not shown on here because again this is conceptual, but the intention being to provide a little bit more of a buffer here to be able to do that. 
We are going to provide a 20 foot buffer across the back and up the sideline that's going to be left natural so that these backyards do have some buffer to the immediate neighbors. And up in here, these trees aren't as bad. Uh, having done the pest pits up in here a couple of weeks ago, um, kind of walking through this area, there's nothing huge in this area. There's a lot of medium growth that kind of extends down a little bit into the backyard where the fence and the sheds are. But yeah, you're probably looking at a good 80 foot wide strip coming back that's going to be clear cut until it narrows in. Right, so there's yeah. literally going to there's going to be nothing left. There's a few trees. Get rid of them. You know, I don't want to see them go, okay? But I don't want to see my crap that get destroyed either. And I don't want to see them with trees on their own. I'm telling you, that's what happens. You talk to a tree guy, they're going to tell you. You can't just come in and it happens all the time. You put in a new house, you know? A couple of years later, you have a big storm and they all go because now they're exposed. It makes sense, you know? Dan, do you have any thoughts on that? No, I, I, I agree with what he's saying, you know. But I, I also think in order to perform this task, you're going to need to open up a lot of space. So it's I not going to make much of a difference. Yeah, I think you can't plan for every tree that's ever going to fall down. Correct. Absolutely. But I think to put these basins in, you have to clear. Yeah real close to the lot lines. I don't know where the trees are located. So is this it easier, I have pictures right here okay, if anyone's okay, saying. Just to say, is it easier to um, just clear from the basins to the road for you guys? I mean, it seems like it's almost easier to clear it, right? Yeah. You, you're typically going to just clear cut that whole swath. When we typically we go in, we, we flag or we stake limits of clearing, we spray paint the trees, yeah. write LOC or something on them. We go in and clear, and we, we basically do this, so we do, do it almost by survey layout, um, so that they can go in and take out only what's necessary. I mean, obviously, anything in the front, to me, should be gone. Um, if right here, for instance, about where it says basin, there were a 30-inch you know, 30 pine tree that were leaning in this direction, yeah, if it were just beyond the 8 feet you wanted for the clearance, you'd still want to take it. You wouldn't, want, you wouldn't want to leave something like that intentionally. We'd love to see some, some trees planted back there again, you know. I mean, it, it, it's a huge impact. Again, you know, not trying to put a, put a damper on the thing, but as little impact as possible, right? We're putting in a road, cutting down all the trees, putting in a, a drainage pit. I mean, you really could not make a larger impact in, a, in an established neighborhood, you know. So again, just looking for some consideration, you know, we hopefully. We do show on our landscaping plan that we're providing straight trees coming up. Yeah. Okay. Evergreens, those are just evergreens, it'd be great because yeah. they keep their foliage. You plant a road at Denver, and I mean, road at Denver is, you know, there's, there's no blockage there, you know, that's, you know. I'm not sure I agree with that, just for the record. What's that? <laughs> about road nice right there. Oh, no, road and are fun. great, but, but they, I mean, they, you know, in the wintertime, they're not great, you know? I mean, it gets cold, and their leaves curl up, and you can see right through them. And evergreen would be a, <laughs> anyway, would we, be we, a, we, it would be honestly, a much better well, choice. Hey, hey, honestly, we, don't, maple. Let's move on. We, we don't have time tonight to, 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 to debate roadies. Um, <laughs> We had another person who wanted uh, to comment. Yes, I'm Jane Schinberger at 48 Gorm Avenue. And I just have a question because I know nothing about any of this stuff except what you're telling me. Uh, why can't they use uh, like part of their driveway, the original one, instead of making a new one? Why can't they come in, from, you know, like come in from there and then set and then turn? I mean, I, I just want to know because I know nothing about landscaping. So in my mind, I was just wondering why you can't use the original driveway and then bear off from there as opposed to starting a new one. Does that make sense? I think um, so. Well, because you need the width for the fire the trucks. Oh. You need the width for the fire trucks, and you also need the site 